So you all know that I talk so much about living a debt-free life. So that is everything from credit cards, car loans, student loans, personal loans, family loans, HELOCs, like the whole gamut. The mortgage is one type of debt I will not yell at you for. But out of all the debt that you can imagine, most of it, people just justify, right? Like credit cards, like, hey, I have to pay my bills. Like, I don't have enough money. What do you expect me to do? Not eat? I've, I've got to use my credit card. Or student loans, like, hey, I'm getting an education. There's going to be an ROI. And if I get student loans, then I can get this degree and then I can go into this field of study and I'm going to, you know, make more in my career to pay off my loan. Like, justify, justify, justify. Well, again, I hear it all the time, but you guys know where I stand. But the one type of debt <laughs> that mathematically is just really hard for me to get my head around is the car loan. Mm. I mean, you are taking out debt, you have payments on something and paying interest on an item that is going down in value. Like in your mortgage, obviously you pay interest, but for the most part, God forbid that it doesn't happen, but it should, your house value goes up. Your car value goes down, but you pay extra on it. And so it's one of the, it's, it's that type of debt that I'm just like, wow, man, it's just hard mathematically. Like if you can't pay for a car and you take out a car loan and you're paying interest, it's just, it's hard for me. I'm not going to lie. And the thing is, is that there are so many cars that you can get that are inexpensive. Like for sure less than 10 grand, for sure. For sure less than five grand even, or around five grand. And yes, you want a reliable car. I totally get it. I would not want to be stuck on the side of the interstate because of like car trouble over and over again. Okay, I'm not telling you to just like get this terrible car that you're having to do maintenance on, but you can get a good, reliable car that is inexpensive. But somehow in our American society, it's just like, no, your car, it's... <laughs> What do they say? The BMW is the status symbol of choice at the beginning of the Dave Ramsey show. But it is, people see your car and they just like can make judgments sometimes on it. Uh, people think they know who you are because of the car you drive. They feel like they know if you're wealthy, if you're not, if you're successful, if you're not, all based on a car. And it's just, it's wild to me. It really is. And so people really will go so deep into debt for their cars. So when I talk about debt, yes, the mathematical side, which we'll get into even more when it comes to car loans, but there's the emotional side of debt. When you owe someone something, so much changes in your life. Mathematically, um, it's difficult to build wealth when all of your income's going out in payments, and especially going out to a payment that is not giving you much in return. So let's look at the math for a second. Let's say you're 18 years old, which I know most of you aren't, but just for fun, because it makes the math more exciting. <laughs> let's say you're 18 and you think, you know what, I'm never going to have a car payment. And in fact, I'm going to invest the average car payment, which right now in America is $556. I'm gonna invest that every month. Instead of paying my car loan every month, because I don't have one, I'm gonna just pretend I do, in a sense, and invest it. Well, if you did that from age 18 to age 65 at 12% interest rate, which some of you are gonna freak out, you're like, that's not true, 12, you can't get 12%. Okay, Winston and I got 12% last year in one of our mutual funds. So like, it is totally possible. So just for fun, let's pretend. Do you know how much you will have in that mutual fund? Five million? Nope. Seven million? Nope. 10 million? Nope. 12 million? Nope. 15 million? Nope. 15.1 freaking million dollars. Do you know how many cars? Do you know how many cars you can buy for 15 million dollars? I mean, I hope you're enjoying your car payment, people. <laughs> I mean, you look at it and you think about it and it's like, what? I mean, it's insane. And then let's, that's at 65. Let's pretend at like age 45, you're like, you know what? I'll take some of that growth out of that mutual fund and just buy a car. I bet you could do that about three years later, but you can do the same thing and the same thing over and over. You can literally buy cars off of just the growth of that mutual fund for like the rest of your life. You could drive free cars. It's insane. Now, some of you that are like, Rachel, no. 12%, there's no way. Okay, let's back it down to 10% just for fun. Well, that's $7.1 million. So it's gonna be around in that range, which again, goes to show you how powerful compound interest is and how well the market does. So when the market does just 2% better, 
yeah, yeah, the math just goes crazy. But even for self, seven million bucks, I mean, it's just wild. So if you can make that decision early on, all you young people, it will literally, literally change your financial life. Some of you are saying, okay, Rachel, that's great, but I'm not 18. Okay, let's pretend you're 40 years old out there, all you 40 year olds. You say, okay, I'm just gonna invest now, a car payment until I'm 65, 12% interest, I mean, you got 25 years, so for sure the math is not on your side as much here, but you'll have 1.7 million. I mean, that's not bad, sure. I mean, if you wanna give me $1.7 million, I'm not angry at you, I'll take it. But just another way of thinking through car payments. Now, another way to finance a car is to lease it. On average, people pay $461 a month to lease a car and you drive it around for a few years, then you give it back. It's basically like you rented it. Basically what a car lease is. So instead of having a car that you can sell at the end, uh, you don't have one. So technically, according to Money Magazine, leasing a car is the most expensive way to finance a vehicle. But on average, people are paying $461 a month. And the mileage though, this was interesting, I looked this up. The average mileage in a leasing package for a year is 12,000 miles. So if you go over that, you actually are going to owe a certain amount of money per mile that you go over on your lease. Well, the average American drives 13,500 miles. So already 1,500 miles on average is over that you're gonna owe more on than just that $461 a month at the end of the lease that you have to turn the car back in and owe more money. So listen, I love cars, love them. I really do, so does Winston. We like, we, we enjoy, I can appreciate a great car. In fact, my dream car is a Tesla, so one day, you see me talking about a Tesla, you can think, that girl achieved her dreams. <laughs> I'll be paying cash, of course, because right now I'm driving a minivan. So just, I know. But can I talk about that for a second too? I After my third kid, I was like, I just need a mom car, I do. So I built out this like nice Suburban online and it was like close to $100,000, y'all. <laughs> And again, I put everything in it. I mean, I'm just playing on my computer, right? So I was like, sure, I'll add that. Sure, I'll add those wheels. Sure, I'll add this entertainment system. Sure, I'll add this package here. This, this, this. I just like souped it up. Brand new Yukon Suburban. Yeah. Like, what? Almost six figures. And again, if you have money, go get it. It's great. I'm not mad at new cars. My rule of thumb is if you have a million dollar net worth, go get you a new car. Because you can actually take the hit when you drive it off the lot and it loses all the value. It's fine, because you, at that point you can. But until you have a million dollar net worth, just buy used cars. So anyways, so I was just couldn't believe, yeah, close to six figures for a car. So then I was like, okay, you know, it is really nice. Okay, let me just like look at a minivan. Well, I souped up the minivan online. Again, this is online comparisons. $35,000. Mm -hmm. I buy three minivans basically for the price of one Suburban. Now, some people can't do the minivan. They just can't find it in their soul because it's a minivan. So I can appreciate that. My sister will not drive one. That's right, Denise, just threw you under the bus. A lot of my friends won't drive them. They don't like them, but it's fine. I don't care. I do have friends that drive them too. It's great. But this minivan, I don't know why I'm talking about my minivan right now because I know you're like car people are like, I cannot believe you're talking about a minivan. It's changed my life. It really has. Minivans are amazing and the kids are gonna destroy it anyway. So I'm like, I don't wanna get a nice car, like like too nice of a car, because I'm gonna freak out when the peanut butter and jelly gets separated and just fried across the seat. Mm -hmm. That happens, yep. But anyways, cars, they just can't define you. Who you are, you are not what you drive. So be smart about it financially, guys. Be smart about it. Remember, I am not against nice cars. I just don't want your nice cars to have you. <laughs>